Racing in F1 is easy, right? All they do is drive around in circles for a bit and try not to hit anything, or any one. Well, if you really think that, then uh, like Honda's 2008 livery, I'm afraid you are all kinds of wrong. What we don't get to see on TV is the punishing forces lap after lap the drivers have to deal with, the kind you or I would find unbearable after just a few seconds. Gone are the days when James Hunt could smoke off the track and then smoke everyone else on it. Today, only hours in the gym and a super healthy diet will give you a chance when the lights go out. This is what it takes to become a modern F1 driver. So why do drivers need to stay fit? First, we need to talk about G-Force. This is the feeling of getting heavier when you're moving at speed. Drivers can experience six times their own body weight in some of the more ferocious corners, and it's the same story slamming on the brakes at the end of the straight. Imagine you've got six identical twins and they're all stood on top of you. That's what braking in an F1 car feels like. To cope with this, drivers need supreme muscle strength in their necks, legs and torso, with enough stamina to perform from the first lap until the last. They also need to sustain an average heart rate of more than 170 beats per minute, put up with 50% higher blood pressure and generate 160 kilos of force just to make the brakes work. Other side effects in F1 include weight loss. Lewis Hamilton says he loses four kilos racing in Singapore thanks to the humidity. There's also extreme discomfort to deal with. Beds aren't made out of carbon fiber for a reason. And if you've ever wondered why the tub supports are molded to each driver's body, the answer is broken ribs. And if all that wasn't enough, imagine crashing at F1 speeds. When Roman Grosjean hit the barriers in Bahrain last year, the impact peaked at 53 G. A lot of technology helped to save his life that day, but being fit and strong can sometimes make the difference between serious injury and walking away. Until 2019, drivers had to be as light as possible to go as fast as possible, and the taller drivers had to take drastic measures with their calorie intake, often causing illness and poor sleep. Now though, F1 rules say a driver and their seat have to weigh at least 80 kilos, with anything less made up with a ballast. So now the playing field is level, and 6 foot 1 inch Esteban Ocon doesn't have to go hungry. How do drivers keep fit? Every driver is different, but most focus on gym work. Here they can target all the right muscle groups, including the most important of all, the neck. This is why you'll see them in some daft positions in social media, often with weighted helmets or resistance bands tied around their heads. It might look amusing, Ricardo looking at you, but it's an effective way of replicating a high-speed corner, and the result is that F1 drivers have the strongest neck muscles in motorsport, capable of shifting up to 40 kilos. Next up are the core muscles. These need to be strong to anchor everything else together, especially when those pesky G-forces are at play. A popular way of developing the core involves sitting on the floor like you would in an F1 car, except the steering wheel is replaced with a big, heavy weight. Which brings us on to the arms. Pull-ups, press-ups and bench lifts help develop the biceps, triceps and forearms, which are essential for making precise steering inputs at speed. You need a steady hand to operate the buttons too. Then there are the legs. Squats build strength in the glutes for stability, while deadlifts focus on the hamstrings and quadriceps. The calf muscles shouldn't be overlooked either, so box jumps, curls and tiptoe raises are solid additions to any fitness program. Drivers sometimes use the brakes more than a thousand times per race, so getting sore really isn't an option. When it comes to cardio, the driver's training methods are a bit more varied. Jensen Button was known for his love of triathlons in his F1 days, and Roman Grosjean made cross-country skiing a regular part of his pre-season routine, something that Lewis Hamilton also discovered in this year's off-season. Running, cycling and rowing are all popular options too. Now don't underestimate the importance of rest. Massage is great for increasing blood flow to sore muscles, and ice baths can reduce inflammation after a gruelling Grand Prix. But what about what F1 drivers eat? F1 drivers have to be very strict with what they eat, so it's not all pizza, 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 regardless of what Daniel Ricciardo would have you believe. Like most athletes, F1 drivers get their protein from meat, poultry, fish and eggs, while quinoa, brown rice and vegetables are all good sources of carbohydrates. Oats are good for fibre and protein shakes are handy for refuelling after a hard workout. Small portions throughout the day keep the metabolism kicking over, and supplements can top up any missing multivitamins or omega-3. 
Not everyone follows this to the letter though. Lewis Hamilton switched to a plant-based diet in 2018 and has said it's made him more alert and quicker to recover from races. Now, some experts think going vegan can actually hold you back as an athlete, but it hasn't stopped Lewis so far. Either way, eating shouldn't be completely joyless, and the odd treat can provide much-needed motivation sometimes. Some favourite foods on the grid include paella, pasta, spicy chicken and ribs, although no one's admitted to celebrating with chocolate cake yet. Do you think you've got what it takes to live the life of an F1 driver? Let us know below and make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss a video.